What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you the best way to control an LED matrix. I use LED Matrix Studio for a lot of my LED matrix software projects and it's made by Maximum Octopus. The link to the software will be in the description. To download it, go to Files and then LED Matrix Studio.zip is what you're going to want to download. If you download the Studio source, you're going to have to compile it, which I don't recommend. Once you have that downloaded, go to your file explorer, extract all, and that's going to give you this folder right here. Go into it and then launch studio.64. Once you have that launched, go to new and then choose the size of your matrix as well as the option for it. In my case, it's going to be RGB and that's likely the option that you're going to want to go with as well. I have an 8x8 matrix, which is already selected. So I'm going to just push create. Mine's a little bit larger than yours may pop up. That's just determined by this feature right here, which is X ultra. In my case, for the size, you can go as small as tiny or as big as the X ultra that I just showed you. To control the software, you're going to choose whatever color you want with the mouse button you want to put it down. So in my case, I want to put down blue with left mouse, red with middle mouse, and black with a uh, the right mouse button. If you wanted to change this, I could change my left mouse button to green by just tapping green, or my middle mouse button to pink by just tapping pink with my middle mouse. I'm going to change that back, so left is blue, and red is middle mouse. And then to erase anything, you just use the right mouse button, so just like that. So I'm going to just draw a couple different shapes, and then you're going to be able to see exactly how the software works. So push export, go to export format and change that to C slash C++ fast LED. Then go to columns, change it from left to right to right to left in my case. And then you're just going to want to copy this code right here. Making sure that the brightness value is set at 100. So push control C, go to the Arduino code, which I will include in the description and then paste that in. All right, now you're going to, to make sure that you have fastled.h installed. If you don't already have that installed, you can go to tools, manage libraries, and then just type in fastled.h, it will be the first result. Make sure you have the correct board, processor, and port selected, and then push upload. So if you look at the LED matrix, it's going to display whatever we just created. As you can see, that's a, our exact pattern, which we had popped up right here. So the four blue dots inside the top left corner, the blue and then the red line, and then the red dots inside of the bottom right corner. Next, I'm going to show you another feature of the software, which is text. To get text, tap on the A right here. And then based on whatever button you selected with, it's going to change the color of the text. So if you wanted to change it with the left mouse button, Go to red, tap here, and then I can type hi, which will show up just like that. I'm going to change the background now, so I'm going to go to the bucket tool, change this to blue, and then tap the background. Kind of like how paint works. Go to export again, and make sure that this value is up to 100 for the brightness. These values should remain the same, depending on uh, how long you've had the program open. You may want to double check it, but in my case it's been pretty consistent. All right, copy paste this into your Arduino program. And then it should just pop up on that window right here. Okay, so as you can see, it now says hi. I'm going to run you through the Arduino code real quick, which will be in the description, as I said. This optimizes the storage for it. This is the display library. This is the number of LEDs. So if you were to connect a 16 by 16 LED matrix, you would put 256 in for here. This is the data pin. So on my Arduino Nano, I have the white cable in my case of the LED matrix connected to D5. You can connect it to any digital pin and it should be the same result. This is just defining the array. This is the array that we are defining, which we got from the LED matrix studio software. This is our setup. I'm using NeoPixel alternatives, but you can use the exact same data values 
and now it'll work for almost every LED strip on Amazon. Right now I just have the brightness set to 4, and I can change that for you to kind of show you the difference. So I'm going to change it to 1, and you should be able to see it get significantly dimmer. It goes all the way from 0 to 255, so as you can see the 1 is significantly less bright. I'm going to show you the 255 real quick, which will be hard to focus on, but you should be able to see that it is, in fact, quite bright. You can ignore that where it says Qbert here, but all of this happening is, is taking the LEDs array right here, and it's running through every single value, and then showing it. The delay of 500 milliseconds is only really relevant to animations, but it's helpful to leave inside of here for some cases, just because it's a, a good example of what to do with the code to let you expand upon it. So as you can see, you can't even currently see the LED matrix at 255. This thing is blinding outdoors. I'm going to change it back down to 16. And it's still quite bright. I had it for 4 inside of the earlier examples. So you can see that these panels really are quite powerful for a whole variety of different projects. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, you can also do animation with this software, which is as simple as adding frames right here, but the coding for that is a little bit more difficult, so I'll try to go over that inside of a future video.